Mr. Hashlinger, it's a pleasure to be with you. I've known you in the past year. We have been involved in the interfaith group that, that you manage so effectively. And we are here in the beautiful uh, Cole Emmeth Temple in Marietta. Uh, so I have a few questions with regard to, first let me ask you, uh, tell us a few things about yourself. Uh, the short story is I was born and raised in Baltimore. Uh, moved to Atlanta in the late 90s yeah. and um, have been involved with this temple. I, I grew up in a, in a reformed Jewish congregation. Uh, my parents were very active and that carried on to me. Um, raised my child here. Um, and that's my short version of who you are. Uh, could you tell us briefly about reformed Jew Jewish tradition versus the conservatives? Sure. Um, we are monotheistic. Um, as, as all Jews are, and the difference, and I think you see this in pretty much all religions, is there are some who are more traditionalist, yeah. and some who are more progressive. Okay. So reform is considered to be more progressive. Right. We, we interpret the, the teachings of the Bible um, more figuratively, right. as opposed to literally. Um, the, those who are conservative or more traditional would be reform or Hasidic. Right. Um, they become more traditional. and they're looking for a stricter interpretation of, of the, the Bible. Um, and they'll look for somebody to give them direction. Sometimes the, the rabbinate will say, this is the way it's to be interpreted. This is the way you keep kosher. This is what, this or that. Um, reform takes it much more figuratively yes. to show our, to demonstrate our faith. Yeah. It's so interesting because it's along the path of Baha'is. Baha'is also believe that a lot of things in the scriptures should not be taken should not be taken literally. Uh, many of them are stories or narratives of 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, written by hundreds of different individuals, uh, and uh, we could run into trouble when we uh, look at them literally and want to apply them literally, as you well know. Right. So we, exactly. we agree that stoning and, and multiple wives is no longer necessary. <laughs> oh, yes. Exactly. Uh, so. Um, uh, could you tell us a little bit about the Cole Emmeth Temple? Sure. How long have you been here? And okay. So Cole Emmeth is in Marietta. Uh, it's been in existence for almost 30 years. It was started by a handful of families who were in the East Cobb area who were looking to be part of a Jewish community. So we first met in a bank and then evolved to meeting at Transfiguration Catholic Church and were able to grow a Jewish community, a Jewish family, so that we could afford to build a building. That's the short story. It's, it was the fact that there was a geographic location. Yeah. And instead of driving into downtown or where else it might be a location. This is a beautiful temple. And now that brings me to the question that I really want us to chat about. And that is your involvement with the interfaith community and how it started and how long you have been doing it and what, what have been the themes that you have had in the past. As far as me or the congregation? Uh, I mean, your involvement with beginning this interfaith group, and then for yourself, and then the congregation. Okay. So the interfaith group uh, started uh, 12 years ago. There was a uh, event that happened in Marietta that seemed like the Jewish and Christian community was not as in tune with each other, and it was it was not a government issue or a school issue. It was just something that happened, and it prompted Rabbi Lebo and Monsignor Pat uh, among, and Amjad Tafik at the Islamic Center to get together and figure out we could do something about this. That the fact that we're different, we can still celebrate our similarities and our common beliefs and such. So they put together the, the first year, the three of them um, at the congregations. It was held here and it was so rewarding to people and it was so um, healing at the time that they said, let's do it again. And that's when I got involved. So I was not in the first year, I got involved in the second year and then have been running it since the third year. This will be our 11th. And it's really been a platform for people, including yourselves, to, um, to meet and, inter and interact with, with people of other faiths. I think Baha'i is probably a little different because you're a, a newer, newer and smaller faith, so you're always meeting people outside of your faith. Um, you can appreciate others who are more um, isolated 
Yes. Um, so this became new. They had some people had never been in a, in a, a Jewish okay. congregation. Somebody, and, and particularly if you go back ten years, uh, where there was still a lot of pain about who's Muslim and what do they do in our in, in the U.S. Um, only to learn that they're they've been here. Muslims have been involved, been here a long time, and they're great members of our community, very valued. People just didn't know who they were. Yeah. Um, you can't go by skin color. You can't go by height, look, or anything <laughs> else. So, who's a Muslim? And I think that's what's really, really grown is that the people have become far more accepting. Yeah. You know, uh, all, all the atrocities that we see in the world, particularly, we know it from the Jewish tradition and Baha'i tradition, is really it seems like because of isolation, because people get together in, in their own smaller community and then do not split out to, uh, so in, in terms of just like what you're doing, in terms of this interface. Um, maybe there's a line here that says they might intermingle with people of other faiths, but they don't accept. So I might meet somebody who's Baha'i or I'm, I'm Jewish, I might meet somebody who's Christian or any other religion. Yeah. I may be able to do business with them, I may be able to play in a sports game with them, or Little League, I just don't accept them, and I may not accept them as an equal because they're of a different religion. Yeah. And I think that's what's broken, been able to come out of this, is that we can see, can we can appreciate each other as equals, right. instead of saying that my preacher, my leader, my rabbi, whoever the faith-based person is, what they say is not absolute. Right. And I think you and I both agree that Definitely. taking things figuratively we're a lot closer than we are different. Exactly. exactly. Uh, you know, along the same line, uh, you may be familiar with this Baha'i passage, or maybe not, uh, that Baha'is believe uh, that a tenet of the Baha'i faith is associating with people of all faiths in the spirit of amity and concord. So that eventually this, exactly what you're doing in terms of interfaith, would lead to, to the ultimate world unity and world peace. Mm -hmm. And that world unity and world peace does not mean sameness, diversity, but at the same time understanding each other. Uh, you know, uh, years ago, uh, uh, people celebrated the fact that we don't agree with each other, but we tolerate each other. But it seems to me, through the message of the Baha'i faith and interfaith, we have gone beyond tolerance. We come to a celebration that you had last year and you have this coming year, and we, we celebrate similarities. There's so many similarities and what I've been discussing with the different uh, rabbis and, uh, and ministers from different churches uh, is that the moral teachings are fundamentally the same. They serve the same purpose on the question of forgiveness and justice and compassion. It's, it's fundamentally the same. Laws are different, but the same, they serve the same purpose. You pray, you fast, Others do it, all, do it differently, but they do the same thing. Uh, what is different, I've been discussing with the friends, is just the social teachings, which means what you're doing, not taking things literally, mm -hmm. which means uh, you know, we can't accept racism anymore, we can't accept sexism anymore, even though we may see passages in the holy writings which may allude to that because times have changed. And those were, those were exi exigencies of those times. Absolutely. Absolutely. We you can, I think one of the things that's fascinating about Judaism is that we have the Bible, we have, we have five books we call, refer to as the Torah, and those five books are read annually, we read through them annually, and each, each week there is a, a portion, a parsha, a portion of the Torah that we read and we think about, and it has fascinated me as I pay more and more attention to, to all of this, that you can take the same story each year and hear it, and it applies differently. Yes. And you can hear the story of Abraham taking his son to the yeah. mountain, yeah. and in one year it can mean one thing, and another year it can mean something else. One year, one year you're thinking about how hard it must be for a dad to keep his faith when his son is so important. And another year you might think of, wow, how hard is it to trust my dad? Right. It, it's just... If whatever's applying in your yeah. life, you find ways to look for religious teachings to help you make decisions. Right. 
So I guess we read in the Bible that at the beginning there was the word, something to that effect. And that word has multiple meanings. Mm -hmm. And, and as, as we advance as humanity, we put newer meanings into it. We, we, I would agree with that. Yes. Yeah. So going back to this question of interfaith, uh, do you remember some of the major themes of what you, the themes of the past 10, 12 years? The, the themes always build off of coexisting. And yeah. when you said tolerate, uh, it reminds us that, reminds me, that we first did say, do we tolerate, and then we said coexist, and then we said, well, no, that needs to be more than coexist, we need to respect. Yeah. And then we said, well, it's not tolerate, and it's not coexist, and it's not respect, actually it's appreciate. Mm -hmm. So over the years, that's part of our conversation, yeah. is that we're not tolerating you. Right. We need to appreciate the things that Baha'i brings to the conversation. Um, as far as themes, uh, we've talked about what we all have in common, why we all think about Thanksgiving, um, and what we're thankful for, and we've done that many times. Um, more recently, we talked about the Golden Rule, right. which in so many faiths, there is a statement somewhere in the teachings about do unto others. Um, one is one is don't like, do unto others as, as you hope others would do to you. Then there's one that's don't do something to somebody that you don't want done. That's okay. hurtful to you. Right. It's the same message, it's the same just message. different words. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, do you have? Uh, I know we had our first meeting, and we'll have another meeting with, for planning for this year. Uh, but do you have some thoughts or ideas for this coming year in terms of the themes to, to use? Whether I do or don't, what's so much more fun yeah. is putting one small idea out and watching everybody come together. Um, I, think, I think people come to the meetings, and, and anybody who's, who's watching this, if they're involved in planning any volunteer activity, knows the hardest thing is to get people to come to a meeting or help contribute stuff. And for us to routinely get 15 people to show up to a meeting and every one of them talk, right. um, to me, is real rewarding. So, so for me to tell you, here's my idea, doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. um, my, idea, my idea is that everybody participates and contributes. Um, and you can watch as these conversations, somebody said, let's do the golden rule. Or let's do, um, uh, well, let's use that one. And it was like, OK, well, if we did that, could we do this? And if we did that, could we do that? And oh, well, here's a great song about that. Then you know you're onto something. It's not. Here's my idea. Let's go all follow. With that. Yeah, and it's so much more fun because we start one way, and sometimes it turns because some other ideas have come up or current events have come up. Um, last year, um, we were extremely fortunate to have um, a speaker who was uh, raised in Palestine. Yes. And talk about controversial, and you talk about the Arab-Israeli conflict, um, which goes. I don't know, I would say it goes beyond religion because it's really not a religious uh, battle, although it's used that way. It was that way. Yeah. And um, I think that just, people fell into, sure, because that would, help, that would help convey the same message that we were all talking about. Uh, any, any thoughts you have for the future of this interfaith activity? Oh boy, yeah. 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 Uh, I, um, I think my, my biggest desire is to get the people who haven't been here. Yes. Um, some, of, some parts of our community are known for lack of tolerance. Um, you, you refer to it as isolation, and I think that's probably fine, fair to say, because it's often safer to be with your own kind. Right. Um, um, probably the thing that I would say is controversial, and then I'll get back to that, was that I sometimes think that people who are very observant in religion can be lazy. And I, well, and, what do you mean by that? That's what I would have like to overcome. I think that if people follow religion entirely, absolutely, and, and can't see things as where, where some of the stories that we hear, right. some of the, the, the figurative talk, if you continue to say that in, in the Jewish faith that you take the Bible absolutely literally, yes. I think you're missing certain things. Yeah. Um, women tr provide a tremendous value to our society. Right. They didn't at a certain point. Right. If you follow the, the oldest of traditions, there's some value to it. But then again, to me, you're not being mature, for example. You're not growing. Yes. Yeah. It's too easy to follow the old ways yeah. and do the old stuff. Whereas if you're willing to try a little harder, right. the benefits 
um, I was very fortunate to be part of a congregation where the rabbi was female. Mm. Very, I, I wouldn't say she was, she changed the view of religion. She just was a very good rabbi and to, to think that she wouldn't be able to be in that role and she was just a fabulous person. Talk about inspiring and, and thoughtful and passionate uh, and compassionate. If, if the religious group that I was in didn't accept that, we would have lost out on that. Yes. So you're we talking about before about where the where where I see the the the, um, the celebration going, yes. the the annual event. Um, I think there's other religions that we haven't gotten to know very well, and, and they are Buddhism, small. Buddhism, Hinduism. Yeah, Native Americans is Native another Americans. one. I think they all offer something, and there's a curiosity, if nothing more. Right. At least a curiosity. To, I've never met one of those. Right. Um, and I hope to. I hope that we're able to continue to rotate through. Um, right. I think uh, Rabbi Lebo, Monsignor Pat from Transfiguration, who has since retired, um, Amjad uh, from the Islamic Center in Marietta, have, have been extremely um, cordial and accommodating right. that they don't speak every year anymore. They, were, they, they shared right. their thoughts every year, and they've been willing to take a back seat right. in an effort and to take other people, including yourself. Um, and, and I think that's great, because instead of having more people and end up taking two or three or four hours, right. we make a point of keeping it short so that it's enjoyable and it's impactful, and then we go eat. Yes, which is just wonderful. That, that's, you know, that's really the essence of religion, because religion... Eating? <laughs> that too. Religion is for the purpose of bringing people together. And when I saw that celebration last year here, 800 people from all these different faiths, associating with each other with this, so much love and harmony. Right. So this is religion. You know, we have now, and we are not understanding uh, the, the message, the message of what Moses and Jesus and Muhammad and Baha'u'llah, all of them meant to say, and said it in I one think, way or another. I think they said it. Yes. I think they said it. I think that sometimes, and, and I hope not to offend whoever is watching, right. I think there are individuals right. who have taken those learnings and seen the power that it has and the benefit and taking it for their own use. Yes. You know, along those lines, it says that they said it. Baha'u'llah says, this span of the earth is one country, and mankind its citizens. Or he says, we are all the fruits and the branches of one tree. You know, that's that celebration that we need to keep emphasizing in these annual meetings. For just one last question, I know you're busy and you need to do something else. I remember that under your signature in the emails that you sent, you said, uh, one, uh, God is too big for one religion. Yes. Could you say something about that? I wish I thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> Who um, thought of that? Who? I, I, you know, I just don't know where it came from. I saw it somewhere, probably a bumper sticker, but I saw that. Um, and it's so true. And I, I almost wonder if, I, I'm almost thinking that it was a Hindu statement, or somebody from, from the, the Hindu community, if, if I were to give anybody credit. Um, I, I've gotten to that point where people say, oh, this is my religion, and this is my religion, and this is the way we do things, right. and, and therefore this is God or Jesus or Allah or one and one, all that. And that's when I saw that. That, that to me kind of sums up that um, whatever, whatever you believe in your faith that helps you become a moral, civil, peaceful. caring, peaceful, yes, person, means that you're part of the, you're contributing value to the society. Mm -hmm. And and that's a wonderful thing. And so whichever God, by whatever name, um, and whatever you describe it as, um, I want to learn more about the Native Americans, because I think yes. there's a whole different view, uh, yet we share the same results, we share the same um, and things. So... Uh, that, that's how we are. Uh, you know, I've been looking at that passage, and then uh, I, I often go to Unity Church, and they also have a passage that says, I don't know whether you've been there or not, it says, uh, uh, many paths, one God, or yeah. one God, many, many paths, paths. Yeah. which is along the same line. Uh, Baha'is take it one step further, they call it progressive revelations, uh, with the idea that if there is one God, he could not have sent conflicting messages. He sends the same message for different communities across the world through time, 
in order to re-emphasize the same message, but bring it up to date. So they call it progressive revelation. So in that sense, yes, many paths, this God is too big. But he also says, in a sense, it's also the same path. And what my friend Richard from the Unity Church says is that you, we are walking to the top of the mountain, but from different directions, which is also fine. And, and we had a, a representative from the Sikh community. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Sikhism is a much younger religion than, than the others. And his point was similar to yours, which was he's learned from, he's, he's saying that the Sikh, Sikhism has learned from other religions and taking the best parts. Similar yes. to universal, right. Unitarian, Universal Unitarians yeah. are saying the same thing. Sikhism. I've heard this, I've heard this, and this is good, and this is good, and... And so I'll get all of them. As right. long as it's good, right. that's my faith as well. Right. <laughs> well, Hal, thank you so much for your time. I, my this pleasure. was a wonderful uh, thing that we had. I just wanted to say that uh, for the pleasure of being with you, I want to give you a gift. Uh, this is called Baha'u'llah's Teaching on the Spiritual Reality which is along the line of many things that we talked about. Thank, thank you very so much. much. I, and I want to thank you because your participation in this group has been uh, eye-opening. You, you. you share points of view, I, I, not share points of view, you put into words some of the things that people are having trouble saying. Um, and I think that may be because the Baha'i teachings That's are- because of Baha'i teachings. Are progressive as opposed to more older traditions Tradition. that are interpreted individually. So I think it's been it's just been a pleasure having you with us. Thank you very much.